This binaural microphone can teach us some really important lessons about how humans hear sound. To get the most out of these demonstrations, you'll want to wear headphones. Inside each of these artificial ears is a condenser microphone. I'm going to record the left and right microphone and play them back through your headphones so that you hear exactly what these ears are hearing. Now you're hearing me through this binaural microphone. There are three fundamental ways that humans determine the location of a sound source. These are called sound localization cues. The first is an interaural level difference, or ILD. If a sound is louder in the left ear than it is in the right ear, you'll naturally perceive that sound to be originating from the left side. The second localization cue is an interaural timing difference, or ITD. When a sound originates from the right side, for example, the sound will reach the right ear slightly before it reaches the left ear. Your auditory system is very sensitive to these cues, allowing you to very clearly determine where the sound is coming from, even if you can't see it. You can harness the power of ILDs and ITDs to trick the listener's mind and create more immersive experiences with a bit of panning and delay while mixing in post-production. You can also capture ILDs and ITDs with regular microphones using stereo microphone techniques. But what makes this microphone so unique and powerful is that it adds a third localization cue, HRTF. HRTF stands for head-related transfer function. That name sounds complicated, but a transfer function is just the effect that a component has on the signal. In this case, we're talking about the effect that the listener's head has on the signal. Interaural level differences and interaural timing differences alone can have ambiguous effects. While these cues can help the listener localize from left to right, they don't do much to help the listener localize on the vertical plane or to localize something from front or behind. For instance, imagine a sound that arrives at both ears at the same time and is the same level in each ear. Well, that could theoretically come from in front of the listener, directly above the listener, or directly behind the listener. Our subconscious awareness of the effects that the head, the outer ear, and the torso have on sounds around us opens the door to a more precise localization. If a sound comes from the left side, it will not only be louder overall in the left ear, but the high frequencies will also be attenuated, absorbed, or reflected by the time it reaches the right ear. And that will result in a slightly darker sound quality in the right ear. The shape of the pinna also plays into this, filtering sound differently depending on the angle at which the sound arrives. Therefore, sound from behind the listener will undergo a slightly different transfer function than sound from in front of the listener. To demonstrate that, let me turn you around. Now I'm behind you, and it may sound like I'm behind you, whereas with two regular microphones, it wouldn't have this effect. In front, above, and behind would have the same result. But now that we have the pinna creating an acoustic shadow to the ear, it becomes clear to your mind and to your auditory system that I'm actually standing behind you instead of right in front of you. And as I walk around this microphone, it has a really great way of capturing a very realistic and immersive recording. Pretty cool stuff. Several microphones have been designed with these principles in mind. One example is the Neumann KU100 microphone, which simulates the average size, density, and shape of a human head. Other microphones even add an artificial torso to capture the cues that the shoulders and chest provide in localizing a sound source. As you can imagine, these are highly specialized microphones and are therefore prohibitively expensive most of the time. But that's why this microphone is so exciting to me, because it offers remarkably realistic binaural recording at a much more practical price point. Rather than building out the full head and torso, 3DO has chosen to use a simple bar that separates the artificial ears to the appropriate distance. They have a few versions of this mic depending on your budget. The first is the FS Pro 2 that has DPA Omni microphones inside each ear and XLR outputs maintaining professional level recording quality. The one I'm using has XLR outputs as well with slightly different capsules. And there's also a less expensive version that has only 3.5 millimeter output designed to be used with phones and tablets. There are also microphone kits that are designed to be inserted into your own ears for recording. However, these have several disadvantages. 
Firstly, you'll need to remain perfectly still and quiet during the recording, as any sound or movement will be permanently printed to the recording itself. And while your own ears might make for a recording that sounds perfect for your ears, it may also make the recording less compatible to other listeners due to the unique shape of your head and your ears. Harnessing the power of HRTFs is slightly more complicated if sounds aren't originally recorded with a binaural microphone. However, tools for implementing HRTFs into audio experiences are becoming increasingly prominent. As a mixing engineer, you can utilize binaural panning plugins that take a mono or stereo audio input and output a binaural rendering. This would unlock your panning capabilities from just the two-dimensional horizontal plane of stereo to a full 360-degree soundscape. One example of binaural technology on the listener's end is the binaural rendering process for Dolby Atmos in headphones. This will adapt a Dolby Atmos mix into a binaural experience so that the surround elements are preserved, even while listening with headphones. In fact, several formats that utilize binaural rendering, including Dolby Atmos, now offer an option to create your own custom HRTF rather than using a standard algorithm based on a generic HRTF. Dolby Atmos has an app that captures 50,000 points of the user's head, ears, and shoulders to generate an algorithm that's uniquely tailored to each listener and ensures that the mix or audio experience translate that much better to that unique individual. The capabilities of this technology are endless, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how far it will go in the future. One idea that's particularly exciting for video games, VR, and AR is to track the direction that the listener is facing and adapt the audio experience in real time. I've left you a few links to some tools and resources in the description below if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching.